They're my top three sleep hacks. Many of my clients have trouble falling asleep. Mm. So I recommend they do three things. Number one, use melatonin. Mm. It absolutely works. If it has not worked for you, it's because mm. at the stores, typically you'll get five to 10 MG doses. That is way too much. I personally use one MG about an hour before okay. bed. Works like magic. Number two, cool your room down. Mm. I personally sleep in a 19 degree centigrade room. Uh, without a blanket, uh, without my clothes on, I need to be really cool in wow. order to fall asleep. Wow, that's Number cold. three, <laughs> make sure your room is pitch dark. Now, I know a lot of girls that refuse to sleep in a very dark room because they're just scared, okay? <laughs> Get over it, pitch dark always works like a charm. Okay, so three sleep hacks here. Number one, he's talking about melatonin. Melatonin is very important for helping us fall asleep. There's no doubt about it. it makes us feel sleepy. We can reset our melatonin and actually increase it naturally by seeing the sunrise in the morning, seeing the sun set in the evening, wearing blue blockers at night so that we don't get a lot of really bright lights to our eyes. Melatonin production does decrease as we get older. So trying melatonin may be helpful, but optimizing melatonin otherwise can be really, really helpful too. I work on not only the melatonin system with my patients, but also on their GABA system. Their GABA system also usually is deficient here and GABA helps us maintain sleep. It helps us fall asleep, helps us wake up feeling rested. So I use something called Agarin, which is from the Amanita muscaria mushroom, also found in Tro-Z at transcriptions because it's a fantastic way to increase the GABA system. And then I also use cortisol a lot, which is from the cordyceps mushroom. This increases deep sleep as well. So melatonin is one option. I think it could be a helpful option. Not everybody does well with melatonin. In fact, I don't do very well with it. He's right though about using lower doses can be very helpful, especially when you're starting. The five or 10 milligrams may be too much if you're relatively younger or if you haven't had a lot of experience with melatonin or if you have and you get like bad nightmares, for example. He's totally right about a dark room. That's really, really important. No light that can shine into your eyes. I have almost, almost all my patients use covering so they use um, eye masks as well to block any light coming in. <laughs> he sleeps naked at 19 degrees centigrade without any blanket. That's impressive. Um, for most people, I do recommend having the room very, very cold, but everybody has a different temperature here. And so like my wife sleeps hotter than I do. She wears all these clothes when she goes to bed. I wear very little. I don't sleep naked. That's okay. That's, that's cool. But in general, you have different sleep temperatures per person. So this is much more variable than he's making it sound. There's lots of other things that you can do for sleep. Make sure you have a good sleep routine before you go to bed, doing the same thing every night. Your body knows it's time to go to bed as soon as you do those things, whatever they may be. And Maybe get a sound machine. There's a lot of other things you can do. Um, these are just a couple different options. Um, interesting video, <laughs> this one.